this problem, we have this pendulum that's at the end of this rope, and there's a bullet that's going to strike it. This bullet will cause it to swing up, and it'll have a horizontal and a vertical displacement that we need to find. Well, I'm going to start by drawing the diagram for what this would look like in its uppermost position. This will be the string, and this will be the pendulum. Now, the string would also go all the way down here at its initial position. This would be the length of L. And this would also be the length of L. This part here would be the horizontal displacement. This will be delta x. This pendulum also makes some angle from the vertical. I'll call this theta. So delta x will be equal to L sine of theta. Now, the vertical displacement will be this distance here, which, if you notice, the total length here is this entire line there. But the delta y is only from this point here down there. So delta y will be equal to L minus this component of the triangle here will be L cosine of theta. So delta y will be equal to L minus L cosine of theta. Now, if we just solve for delta y, since we already know the length of the string, we can find this angle that we can use to solve for delta x. So I'm just going to set up a problem that lets me solve for delta y. Well, I have to actually start with a momentum equation, because if I start with energy and I said that the energy of the bullet is just equal to the energy here, I'm not taking account that the bullet will actually... Uh, lose some of its energy coming into this block because it's forced to carve out this section of the block. It'll, you know, experience a lot of friction and generate a lot of heat, um, which will lose energy. So I'm actually going to start with the conservation of momentum of when the bullet just finishes breaking into this block. Because at this point, all of the energy that will be lost has been lost since we're ignoring air resistance and so all i need to do is find the velocity i'll call this v2 at this point so i'll use conservation momentum the momentum before is just the momentum of this bullet so it'll be the mass of the bullet which will be m1 times the velocity of the bullet which will be v1 this will be equal to the momentum of the bullet and the pendulum together which will be m1 plus m2 times their new velocity v2 so solving for v2 because it's what i don't know v2 will be equal to m1 v1 over m1 plus m2 now i can set up a conservation of energy equation from this point here when the bullet is no longer losing any energy to the point where it's at its maximum position and has its maximum displacement. So since there's not going to be any non-conservative forces, the energy before will equal the energy after. The energy before, I'm calling E1, will just be the kinetic energy of this pendulum and bullet, which will depend on V2 and their mass. It'll be 1 half M1 plus V2, because it's the kinetic energy of both of these moving together. And this will be V2 squared. And this will be equal to just the gravitational potential energy at its maximum position. Because briefly for a moment, its velocity will be zero. So it'll be M plus M. This is going to be mass 1, mass 2, times G. And then the height will be delta Y. Now I'm going to plug in this V2 term in for this V2. It'll be quite long. It'll be 1 half times m1 plus m2 times m1 v1 over m1 plus m2. That is all going to be squared. And this will be equal to m1 plus m2 times g times delta y. This m1 plus m2 is going to cancel on both sides. I'm only able to do this because they're in parentheses and they're being multiplied to the other terms. So now I'm going to distribute this square to both of the terms at the top and this quantity at the bottom will be squared. It'll be 1 half times 
m1 squared v1 squared over m1 plus m2 quantity squared. This will be equal to g delta y. I want to divide g to both sides. And delta y will be equal to m1 squared v1 squared over 2g m1 plus m2 squared. So that's my answer for delta y. Now I just need to find delta x. Well, I said at the beginning that delta x is equal to L sine of theta, and I need to find what theta is in order to solve for x. So I'm going to get the cosine theta by itself. This will be minus L minus L. It'll be delta y minus L is equal to negative L cosine of theta. I want to divide this negative L to both sides. I'll get cosine of theta is equal to L minus delta y over L. So theta will be equal to cosine inverse of L minus delta y over L. Now I can go over here. We said that delta x is equal to L sine of theta. So it'll be L times sine. We said theta was cosine inverse. And it's cosine inverse of L minus delta y over L. Now, this might look intimidating because you have a sine, and then inside of it, you have a cosine inverse thing. What you should do first is solve the inside here, which will require you finding a numerical value for delta y. When you find that value, you plug it into here. So you'll get some number in here. Then you do the cosine inverse of that number, and you'll get a different number. And then that number you put into sine. So you always start with the inside most part, and then work your way out until you get sine of some number, and that'll give you your final answer for delta x when you multiply it by this L. So that's your final answer. Thank you for watching.